Welcome to the patio of heavenly delights and smoking hot barbecue. Today, since I'm not going to be writing for a little while, I thought I'd take some questions that, and comments that people have sent me over the last few months. Uh, and this is a fitting time because this is actually the six month anniversary of our channel. Um, we're quite happy with all the response we've gotten and all the very nice comments we've gotten from everybody and I thought we'd take this time to go ahead and answer a few questions that people sent me. So with that in mind, let's get started. This one comes from Josh P. He says, enjoy your videos. Just wondering it seems like you don't use a GPS. I know you don't like the Forest Service maps, who could? But how about using the Forest Service KLM files on a GPS? Just asking. Well, you're right. I, I sometimes carry a GPS, but it's only to record a track. I don't use it for navigation or anything. Primarily because uh, I've been riding these hills a really long, long time. and. Uh, I pretty much know where all the roads go. My, my problem now is that some of the roads that used to be very popular are now closed and uh, a GPS just doesn't do much for me. Uh, that said, I don't, I don't see any problem with GPS's. Uh, if you like a GPS and you can read the screen and it helps you get around, uh, by all means do it. Uh, just because I don't do it, uh, you know, it doesn't mean anybody else shouldn't. Um, and uh, I have looked at those files and used those files. They are pretty good. They do show all the trails, all the open trails. So, um, yeah, go ahead and do it if you like. Uh, what can I say? This comes from Chickada Chickada. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for posting these videos. You're welcome. I've noticed that when you mention trail ratings like 1, 2, 5, etc., but I've looked on the G Forest Service maps and can't find where the ratings are shown. Can you help me? Uh, no. The uh, ratings are my own. The Forest Service uh, does not rate trails in the Black Hills. In other uh, forest areas they do. They rate trails according to dif difficulty on a 1 to 5 scale. Uh, since they don't do that, uh, I've kind of taken it upon myself to give my own personal rating on what I think trails are. But they're not official anywhere and it, it only applies to the trails that I actually mentioned by name. Uh, it would be nice if the Forest Service did that, but they don't. Okay. Now this is a long one. WTB writes, Hi Dean. Hope you're well. Well, I was. I've been trying to watch your videos to find out where to go for the best ATV trails. Would you be able to tell me the best area to ride? I came to the conclusion that it would probably be in the northern hills or central hills. I would also like to know about dispersed camping areas you suggest. <clears throat> Thanks for any help you can give from the rocking chair of wisdom. Well, I'm not in the rocking chair of wisdom today, sorry, but I really can't. Um, it, it's very subjective. The I've ridden with a lot of people and trails that I thought were just great, some people haven't liked. Uh, trails that some people liked, I thought, well, kind of, you know, not for me. So it, it's really hard for somebody to say what is the best trail for another person. I can tell you, kind of general, I can say that, well, this trail is pretty rocky or this one's grassy or, or so forth. But as far as determining whether that's the best or the worst, I can't do that. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of limited too because of, for various reasons, I can't really recommend specific trails. I can't say go take trail 80, 89, which I just did, so I broke my own rule there. But uh, I could tell you what the trails are, but I can't really recommend that you take a particular trail. Uh, uh, there's legal reasons for that, uh, which uh, the Forest Service is uh, happy to point out. So uh, I'm going to make a video on that. That'll be a separate video as to 
why trails can't be recommended and why there's no trail guides in the Black Hills. So I'll be watching for that probably in the next couple months. Isaac writes, Hello, we are enjoying watching your videos about the trails in the South Dakota. We are from Iowa. My dad has been out riding on the trails a couple of different times. More of us would like to come, just wondering if there's any, any way to get a map of the trails that are going to be used for the rally. This would be the Soggy Bottom ATV rally in, in August. They look really interesting, but we won't be able to make it to the rally, even if it was just a picture of the trail the map would do. Uh, again, for uh, legal reasons, we can't really uh, publish maps. Uh, there is a map, there's a very good map, uh, it's out at the Mountain Meadows campground. Uh, I understand it's right on the wall inside the door, although I haven't, I haven't actually seen it, so somebody could check it out, but I've been told that's where it is. Uh, and it, it's right there on the wall, and it's a big thing. It's like three, four feet by five feet. It's a huge map of the area. Um, and I would guess if you go in there with a cell phone, they'll let you take a picture of it. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, there was a map that uh, the ATV club was going to publish, uh, but I understand they backed out of that, so uh, it's not going to be available. But uh, that's probably your best bet in that particular area. It's too bad. I mean, it would be nice if there were more better maps. <clears throat> Glenn M. writes, Roughly what proportion of the trails are open all year? That's a good question. Uh, certainly more than half. Uh, I don't know if anybody's actually taken a mile measure. I'm sure the Forest Service has, but they may not want to tell you. Um, <clears throat> roughly, on my, my experience, it'd probably be somewhere around 70%. Uh, they do close trails in the central hills and in certain other parts of the hills for uh, habitat protection. Uh, those are seasonal closures. They usually run from December 15th to uh, May 15th. Uh, and I, I think it's somewhere around 25-30% of the trails in the Black Hills. Uh, just as a rough estimate. Okay, we got James P. here. He says, good morning. Well, might still be morning, I don't know. Better be afternoon, okay. <clears throat> My family will be headed to South Dakota in two weeks to vacation and will be bringing two rangers for riding. We will be staying in the Terry Peak area. Do you have any suggestions for where to start riding? We were trying to put a daily plan together and would appreciate any help with that. We are going to be there for a full four days. Thanks in advance for any help with this. Well, once again, I can't recommend specific trails. Um, but I can tell you a little bit about Terry Peak. Uh, if you go on Airbnb, you'll find there's a lot of rental cabins up in Terry Peak. There's a, there's a little housing area and it's full of cabins and they're almost all rental cabins or seasonal cabins that people will use a couple times, a couple weeks a year and then rent them out the rest of the time. Uh, the problem in Terry Peak is there's a small Forest Service trail riding area just to the uh, well on the north uh, south on the on the south west slope of Terry Peak. There's there are some forest trails there. Uh, you'll run through most of them in a couple hours. Now that said. There's a lot of riding up there, but it's almost all on private land, and that's because uh, much of the land in the Terry Peak area, and that would be the, the general area between um, Spearfish Canyon on the west, uh, Maitland on the, on the east, uh, Highway 85 on the south, and Spearfish on the north. Uh, that the majority of the land there is owned by mining companies, and they hold it in reserve for future mining. And you can ride there. It's not posted. They, they don't have any no trespassing signs or anything like that. 
And there's actually an extensive trail system on that uh, mine land, that, that mine owned land. Uh, but they're not marked. Um, they're not Forest Service trails. They're just ad hoc trails. They just go around. They're well used, they're well traveled, they're well known. But because they're just ad hoc trails, they're not mapped, they're not numbered. So if you want to ride in that area, your best bet is just to go up there and as long as you don't see a, a fence or a no, tresp no trespassing sign, uh, go for it. Um, you, you, you aren't really trespassing unless people tell you you're trespassing. And the mining companies are kind of, you know, they've got a bad reputation because they kind of tear it up. And uh, if they ever develop the mines in that area, they will pretty much destroy what's there. Uh, and for that reason, they, they, um, they tend to be very tolerant of people riding over their land. Um, a good example is the old White, Whitewood uh, Railroad right-of-way that used to go from Deadwood to uh, Whitewood, went up through a tunnel. Uh, that land was uh, owned by uh, Homestake and uh, all along there, but people ride that right away all the time. It's open. They, they actually have it uh, trails open. There's a walk-in fishing area and everything else. So, uh, yeah, you can ride there, but uh, there's no map or anything. You're, you're going to be kind of on your own, uh, but it's good riding. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Okay. This is from pa Mel. Damn, that's a huge wiener dog. <laughs> that's Weenie. <laughs> that's Angie. Uh, you've seen her in a lot of videos if you watched her. Uh, she is uh, really a sausage dog. She's also been called a Doxzella. Uh, she is about, uh, well, on a good day, she's 35 pounds. If she's been gorging herself on some of her favorite foods, she's 37. Uh, she loves to ride. She's a great companion. Uh, we've had her, you know, she's a 12-year-old dog, so she's kind of getting up there, but, but she still likes to go out on the ATV. Uh, I guess old dogs are like that. Okay. Randall R. Oh, I'm sorry, Kendall R. Of all the trails in the Black Hills, would a 50 inch wide trail side by side work okay? I'm looking at purchasing a Can Am Trail 1000 with power steering. Absolutely. And no trouble at all. Uh, you got a 50 inch unit like a, uh, well, I happen to have a, a Wildcat Trail, which is a 48 inch wide unit. I had wider tires and bigger tires, so it's close to 50. But yeah, you can go anywhere with a, almost anywhere with a 50-inch uh, rig. The only place you can't go is trails uh, specifically designated for dirt bikes, and there's probably less than 20 miles of those trails. Um, if you have a big rig, uh, wider than 62 inches, uh, then you're limited. There's a lot of places you can't go, so keep it under 62 inches, you'll be fine. You can go almost everywhere. Okay, well that's the end of part one of this video. The uh, next part will be uh, more about uh, adventure bikes, so uh, if you want to just go ahead and find that coming up pretty soon, uh, stay tuned. Uh, meanwhile, thanks for joining us on this video, and uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, please uh, like us, and uh, you can also subscribe. So uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Bye.